Hello there, the coolest shadow of the year is here, bursting with one and done sheer shadow joy to share a merit solo shadow review and swatches of every shade with you. We've got lots to cover, the concept, the texture, application, the shade range, the crease proof promise, the wear time, the packaging, the brush. This isn't a merit movie, it's a DVD box set. One of the most requested, Matilda are you going to swatch these please launches in a long time. Solo shadow matte eye colour or cream to powder soft matte eyeshadow, full name on it's Sephora birth certificate is the first eyeshadow launch from Merit, a well-edited, minimal makeup brand that feels like Glossier's grown-up, effortlessly cool cousin. Merit didn't want to spice up your life like it's 1997, they wanted to simplify your life with a 90s inspired, easy to use, soft matte, buildable shadow for everyday wear. It's their less is more antidote to the complexity of 20 or 50 shade eyeshadow palettes. I do want to say, if you enjoy sitting down and getting creative with a big palette, go for it. That's art. Both styles of makeup should be able to coexist. One's not better than the other, and there is irony in tackling a saturated makeup market with more makeup. But if you do have less time or skills or don't usually wear shadow, a product that looks great on its own, seems like you put effort in but actually took about 20 seconds, and is small enough to fit in your pocket is very appealing. Solo Shadow took seven years to develop. I probably expected Shadow Sticks when I first heard it was coming a few months ago. All I knew was the name, but the finger painting appeal of a pot makes sense. Let's talk texture. You'd think something that looks and feels this creamy would be a recipe for creasy disaster. One of you on Instagram said these look so emollient they'd last 15 minutes, but don't worry, they're deceptively long wearing for something so creamy. They're a cream to powder, but they don't end up looking or feeling powdery or dry or crepey once they set. A recent formula that comes to mind for me is Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Flushed, a balm to powder blush, and one of the only other textures I could think of that feels and looks this creamy, but applies as a really even, long wearing, subtle matte wash of colour. In terms of application, you can tap Solo Shadow straight on with your fingers for a sheer wash. That's how I like to start, patting it on, then smudging. The colour softens straight away, so you're not going to get in a mess. It almost has a blurred quality as you start to swipe. Or Merit's new double-ended brush number two can pick up, blend, and layer product. The fluffier end diffuses the colour. I personally still prefer to apply it with my finger first, then the brush works well to soften the edges or add a little more. The tapered, tiny end is nice for soft eyeliner or perfect to sneak the shadow under your bottom lashes. Love that. How long do you have to work with this before it starts to set? Someone asked me how it compares to Violette FR's Year Paint liquid shadows. If you've used those, you know you have to be on your A game, like ready to win a 20 penalty shootout at the World Cup to blend before it sets. Luckily this is not like that. It instantly feels more forgiving because the colour softens nicely, but it does start to set relatively quickly, so stay on task, keep smudging, one eye at a time. Once it sets, because it's sheer, you can keep layering more on top if you'd like to build or even out what's already there. I do feel the brush drag a bit if I'm going over a dry area, but it doesn't pick up what's underneath. In this eight shade range, there are four neutrals and four statement shades. Incredibly cool mood board teaser images of art and 90s supermodels. So refreshing to see a 46 year old fronting a beauty campaign, by the way. Polish model Malgosia Bella was a great choice because creamy products are flattering for all ages. Think of the first four shades as your classics or capsule wardrobe with suggested matches to their minimalist complexion stick shades and inclusive imagery of every shade on their website, then four pops of colour. These are your statement jewellery pieces to swap in. Some people were surprised to see these tones from Merit, but you can still love a fresh face and get creative with pops of colour. Studio is meant to be a cool taupe, the first one I dived into. If you're hoping for a true grey-brown taupe, you'd be disappointed. On my fair, cool-toned skin, it's warmer with a hint of rosiness to it. All over the lid, it comes across more caramel, but that slight rosy tone is still there. Vaquetta is called a warm beige. Hello, latte makeup. In my recent take on that trend, a minimal makeup one and done shadow version, I hinted at an upcoming product launch that would fit the vibe, and of course it was this. I have a feeling this toasty tan will be a popular one. 
mid-century is described as a warm brown, like finding a great mid-century modern sideboard. I don't know if it's wishful thinking, but I can almost see red tones coming through sometimes. The whole group is an autumnal dream so far, so they timed the launch very cleverly heading into fall. Brun or Brune is a deep brown. This is where my experience was patchier. Doesn't come as a shock with any dark colours, but it redeems itself through the texture. Gently pat on a bit more with your finger over any patchiness, then a final brush blend helps it look surprisingly sheer and even for such a dark chocolate. Social is called a soft mauve and the start of the statements. As a big soft pink shadow person, I would have loved a light blush or dusty rose in the range, but this mauve passes as pink with more depth. Like the blotted lipstick of the shadow world, it softens as soon as you swipe it on. Nelson is described as soft grey, but it'll only be soft if you're shearing it out. I can see why one of the shade references was a British blue cat, my favourite. I normally skip grey, but I've been wanting to experiment with it more since makeup artist Joe Baker's great grey looks on Olivia Wilde this year. Midnight is a classic navy. It's me, hi, Midnight's inspired Eras Tour looks. I did see people saying navy merits about minimal makeup, but you can still be playful with this in a minimal way, wearing it as a wing or a wash of barely there blue. Naturally, not gonna be as even as the lighter shades though. Viper is a warm green. Could I please order a nail polish in this exact color and a trench coat? So many people seemed excited about this deep forest green. I do like a dark green liner instead of black sometimes to play on my green eyes, so I'll be more likely to line with this one. Two cohesive groups. As much as I would have loved to have seen Merit's take on an entirely neutral colour gradient, I can appreciate the 90s inspiration and imagery that led to the statements too. Very curious to see which shades end up being the big sellers. As you can see, the lasting power promise is legit. These do not budge. Bioderma on a cotton round takes quite a lot of effort to remove. Even my favourite Chanel eye makeup remover, which gets everything off easily, takes a few goes, particularly with the darker shades. But on your eyes, if application is sheer, you don't have to be this rough if they come off easily. The zero creasing promise is harder to talk about because everyone's eyelids are different. Different shapes, oily, dry. I have deep set eyes and constantly face creasing so I always use NARS eye primer, but Solo Shadow is so impressive without primer, better without it even. After about four to five hours on me, a tiny crease line is there, barely visible from afar, easy to smudge in. After eight hours, the overall shadow still looks intact, but the creasing does increase. Nowhere near the usual level of product hanging out in the middle of my eye though. I just wore Studio most days on a work trip for a week and trusted it to look as good at 5 p.m. as it did at 9 a.m. It ends up taking this formula about 12 hours on me to reach a crease I'd expect after two hours in any other creamy shadow without primer, so that's a massive wear time win. Quick packaging chat, relatively lightweight plastic, can't see the exact material listed. The shape reminds me of Victoria Beckham Beauty lid lusters, but those are in a heavier glass pot. If I'm being picky, I will say it's a bit fiddly. Such a smooth low lid means my fingers can slide before I get enough purchased twist. Much easier going in with a knuckle grip or even a flat palm works weirdly well. The lid clicks before you get into the right gear to twist it all the way open and the same thing happens when you're closing them. You might think you've got to an end point but you need a final stronger twist to seal it shut properly. Brush business. I love Merit's number one brush. It blends their creamy minimalist complexion stick seamlessly, so I wasn't surprised brush number two works beautifully with this texture. Dense vegan bristles that are compact enough to pick up and deposit product, but soft enough to soften it too. The shape and double-ended feature reminds me of Rowan's Everything Eye Brush. I really like this for all sorts of cream and powder shadow work. Another one in my collection that's fairly close is Refa Brush 12. Similar dome, a little small Rare Beauty's all over eyeshadow brush is also worth considering in any cream or liquid shadow conversation. Basically the only bad news is Merit only ships to the US, Canada and UK at this stage. They launched about two and a half years ago so these things do take time but I really hope World Domination's on their to-do list. If you're outside that range your options are investigating a mail forwarding service, politely begging a friend who lives in the US, Canada or UK to mail your order or getting a travelling friend to sneak some into their suitcase.
let's wrap things up. If big eyeshadow palettes are the girl bands of the makeup world, Solo Shadow is going to have a huge career when they release their first solo album and might even be number one on my Spotify year in review. It strikes a great balance between being sheer enough to feel approachable for beginners, but the texture and performance also satisfied a beauty lover like me with high expectations. I hope this video was helpful. Now over to you. Let me know if this is what you were expecting an eyeshadow launch from Merit to look like. Did it slide straight into your cart or are you more of a powder or palette person? I've been wearing studio and social most. Interested to hear which shades stand out to you or do you already have these tones covered by other cream shadow formulas you're loyal to? Please let me know what they are. Can't wait to hear your solo shadow thoughts. Thanks for watching. See you next time.